Good morning once again. In just a few moments, we'll be joined by head coach of the Auburn Tigers, Bruce Pearl. After a few minutes with Bruce Pearl by himself, we'll be joined by student athletes from Auburn. The expectation is that we're going to have Horace Spencer and Jared Harper. The other student athletes are available in breakouts right now. They're wrapping up soon, and those student athletes that are not Horace or Jared will be available in the Auburn locker room until 10.50 this morning. Our schedule here from 10.30 to 10.50, we'll have Bruce Pearl. At 10.40, the student athletes Horace Spencer and Jared Harper will join us as well. A couple reminders while joining us here in the main interview room. Please take a moment to silence your cell phone. I'm going to take mine and make sure mine's silent right now. Please remember no flash photography at all in this room and no video recording devices. That includes handheld cameras, professional news gathering cameras, and it also includes mini cams and it includes your cell phones. So you can't shoot video in here with your cell phone to post later. You also can't go live here in the main interview room on any social media platform, so keep that in mind. There's other places in the arena where you can do those types of interviews and you can go live, but this room's not gonna be one of them, just so everybody knows. Satellite information for this week and all weekend, we're on Galaxy 17, transponder 14K slot A. The rate is 11.914, the symbol 7.2. The downlink 11966.5 vertical. If you need that information, please ask one of the gentlemen or ladies from Hammond Communications. They'll be able to help you out with that. Those coordinates are the same today as they were yesterday. They'll be the same for the rest of the week and weekend. We have four microphone stewards here in the main interview room, Matt and Dylan, Olivia and Ben. If you have a question over the course of today's news conferences for our head coaches or for our student athletes, please raise your hand. We'll send the microphone steward in your direction. Then we'll recognize you and you state your name and media outlet or affiliation before you ask your question. We'll have Coach Pearl in just a few moments and he'll be joined by student athletes Horace Spencer and Jared Harper a few moments after that. The Auburn Tigers student athletes are also available in their locker room right now until 10.50 a.m. this morning. Make sure when everybody comes in. No bottles, no, okay. Great. Coach Pearl is arriving right now. Auburn availability runs until 10.50 a.m. this morning. Morning, Coach. Great morning. How you doing? Great. Can I get one of these chairs? I think so. I think we may have an extra one for you. Yeah, mine doesn't have wheels. I got a little chair. Envy. We're joined right now by the head coach of the Auburn Tigers, Bruce Pearl. We'll ask Coach Pearl to give us a couple thoughts as an opening statement, then we'll take some questions for Coach. I'm really glad we're playing tomorrow, not today, because yesterday between practice and uh, 30 hours of media, we're exhausted. Um, but we'll get our batteries charged today um, and uh, you know, go about preparing for, for a great uh, opponent in uh, Virginia. We, uh, again, we're humbled, we're blessed, we're honored uh, to still be playing. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've completely trusted God and um, in, 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 what, in, in the way he's delivered for this team, uh, we feel blessed and those that are blessed are blessed so that they can bless. So that's what our, that's what our plan is. Um, questions? If, if you have a question for Coach Pearl, please raise your hand. Let's go over to the right side of the room. Chris from St. Paul. Yeah, hey, Coach, Chris Thomas in St. Paul Pioneer Press. What, 
What's it like having Charles Barkley cheer you on the way he has been, you know, throughout the years and especially during this NCAA tournament? And how cool is it that, you know, you got Barkley cheering on Auburn, you got Magic Johnson, Michigan State, Ralph Sampson, Virginia in this Final Four? I tell you, it just says something about how this tournament, you know, transcends uh, American life. Um, you know, the, the, the thing about Charles is he was cheering us on, supporting us, texting, calling, even in the years we weren't very good when I first got to Auburn. Like, I'm no, I don't have more contact with Charles now than I did two or three years ago when we were, when we were struggling to just become a competitive program. Um, but I think it is cool for, uh, you know, for the nation um, to have their alums, their donors, uh, their students being able to walk around loud and proud that their team is still playing for a national championship. Chris, let's get you the mic. How about just terms of Samson and Magic? I mean, you got three Hall of Famers basically cheering on three of the four teams. Well, and there's bragging rights at stake. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact that on the, on, the, on the set at CBS, you know, it was, Al it was Auburn against North Carolina. It was Charles Barkley against Kenny Smith. And, uh, you know, part of beating Carolina and, and, and the history and tradition, and, and, and that blue blood, if you would, was having Charles Barkley from Leeds, Alabama, who went to Auburn, you know, not one of the bigger schools, and to have his team, it, it, was, uh, it was sweet. Coach, we have a couple of questions in the back of the room in the center. We'll do one, then the other. Remember your name and media outlet. Hi, Coach. Uh, Zach Griffith from Sports Capital Journalism. Um, your first time at the Final Four, uh, can you just describe the experience being here for the first time and uh, what do you think it means for Auburn as a whole? Um, one of the things that I've been doing in answering that question is reminding uh, that while this may be my first Final Four and, uh, and the big dance uh, in 1994, uh, we lost in the national championship game to Cal State Bakersfield. And then in 95, we won the national championship against Cal State River Riverside. Um, so this is actually the third time I've been there, and the only reason why I say it is not to correct you, but to give credit to the Division II programs and the other championships. Um, um, it is, uh, there is no bigger stage, and I'm just excited for my players, because they, I mean, they're, they're walking around with their jaw dropped the whole time. Every time you turn a corner and you see another sign or another picture or another you know, they just can't, you know, they got to be pinching themselves. I, and I think so is this 59-year-old guy. And the lesson for me is simply what a great country we live in, that, um, that coaches like myself or Chris Beard, who came up differently than, 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 uh, than others, but anybody can, you can get here. Any, if I can get here, anybody can get here. So I think it gives hope that uh, this land is a land of tremendous opportunity. And as far as Auburn is concerned, Auburn is one of the best public institutions in the southern part of the country. I mean, it's a destination place for people in the south. Um, we've got phenomenal programs, nationally ranked in many things, and all this is gonna do is bring some more, um, I think, credibility. And uh, Auburn's a great college town, and I think that um, the kids that go to Auburn want to be in that environment. It's, it's a very, very special place. And uh, I think more people are going to visit it now because of Auburn being in the Final Four. Coach, we'll stay in that same part of the room, back center. Um, Caleb Lynn, IUPUI Sports Capital Journalism Program. Um, Bruce, uh, Coach Pearl, in 1994, 1995, um, you, you were able to win the national uh, championship with, with USI. How are you trying to um, relate that success and try to Teach are obviously different teams, but how are you looking at that success and trying to relay it to your guys in, in the locker room? I'm sure my players know that uh, the history. I've not talked to them at all about it. Um, what I've tried to do is treat this as, the, as, as another regional. Um, in this sense, when we were in Kansas City, it was a four-team tournament. It was North Carolina and Auburn, and it was Kentucky and Houston. The weekend before in Salt Lake, it was New Mexico State and Auburn, Northeastern and Kansas. 
This is another four-team tournament, just like those other two. And so we're not trying to change anything about our routine, about our preparation. And so therefore, the fact that we maybe won it in 95 and played for it in 94, um, that wouldn't be something I would have talked to them about weeks ago, and it's not something I'm going to focus on now. You know, one of these four teams is going to survive this weekend, and uh, the prize is the national championship. We'd like for it to be Auburn. Coach, let's move to the right side of the room, right of the aisle. John Krasinski with The Athletic. Coach, just uh, kind of building off what you've been talking about, not even just this weekend, but back home at, on campus and things, your players are talking about how students are stopping them for photos and yeah. teachers are you know, giving them attention and things that maybe they hadn't experienced at this program before. How do you think they have handled maybe stepping out of football's shadow a little bit and being really the big men on campus again? Um, one of the things I've asked the players to do is not take advantage of the situation in the sense that we were in class Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And uh, I think, yeah, it was easier to go to class because they knew they were probably going to get a pat on the back. But at the same time, you could understand maybe a professor going, well, I could understand why. They just got back late last night. They leave in a day or two. No. And get your assignments in. And again, you would hope that maybe some of the teachers would understand that there's a lot going on right now, but how impressive will it be that you're still able to get your work done? You're a student first. So the first lesson is don't take advantage of it. I think the second lesson for me is when I got to Auburn, our basketball program, our athletes may have been recognized as, athlete, as athletes, but they didn't wear a lot of Auburn basketball gear because it, it wasn't, uh, we weren't holding up our end. And so I'm glad now that our men's basketball players can join the other athletes, like the football team, like the softball team, like the soccer team, like the baseball team, like the equestrian national championship team, the golfers and the tennis players and the guys and gals in the pool. Because now, like them, we are competitive. Um, we are champions. And so I, I don't look at it as our guys are big men on campus. I, I look at it like our guys now have a right to fit in to the rest of the campus. On the right side, left of the aisle, Mark. Hi, Mark Herman from Newsday, New York, Bruce. Uh, about Virginia, what did you think last year when you saw that they lost to a number 16 seed? And what do you think about the way they handled it? You know, adversity, uh, it reveals character. It doesn't build it. Like, adversity doesn't build character. Adversity is really hard to go through. So therefore, when you're going through something really hard, your character gets revealed. And I think that's what, that's what we're seeing here. Um, they, they accepted and they were accountable and they went about their business to try and see if they could be good again. I mean, it's, it's easier to get something going. It's harder to keep it going. Like last year, Auburn won its third ever regular season championship in men's basketball. Third time, 1960, 1999, and last year. I'm not talking about this year. We didn't celebrate that success. We talked about the fact that at the end of the year, we had unfinished business because we lost in the second round of the tournament. Like Virginia, our kids said, you know what? We, gotta, we, 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 have, we, we can't lose this opportunity again. Virginia had an opportunity a year ago as a number one seed, didn't take advantage of it. The way to advance in the tournament is the, to be a higher seed, a better seed. They've corrected that. Whatever it was that they had to do, I don't know. But they corrected it, and it's a, it's a great story. That same part of the room. Bruce, uh, Dane Mizutani with the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Uh, you've talked a lot about building the program and, and building tradition. How did you go about doing that at a place like Auburn, which really didn't have a, a huge basketball tradition or basketball expectations? Well, the number one thing you do, and you use the word, number one thing you do is you raise the level of the expectations of your players. When I have inherited different programs at different places along the way, um, their expectation was not to be able to compete for a conference championship. And when I say compete for a conference championship, that means being in the upper division. So I'm not saying I came to Auburn and said, we're going to win championships. I came to Auburn and said, we're going to be relevant and we're going to compete for championships, which means just get in the upper division. So I had to raise the bar and then get my kids to understand, okay, now what do we need to do to put ourselves in position to attain that kind of a goal. And so, and then you do it like with everything else. 
When I was in Division II at Southern Indiana, I had come from the University of Iowa. I knew how we had done it at a, in the Big Ten. And I brought that same mentality to Division II as best I possibly could. And the way we treated our student athletes, the way we trained our student athletes, like our kids weren't getting any coaching or any training that was less than what they received at Iowa. And I don't want our kids at Auburn to be able to receive the kind of coaching or training that's any less than any of the best programs in the country. And we've proven that our kids can get, come to Auburn, get better, and play for championships. To the left of the aisle, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin Brockway at CNHI Sports Indiana. Uh, Bruce, I'm, I'm curious how your experience at Southern Indiana Division II school kind of molded and shaped you as the, the coach you are today. Well, we'll just say this. If you talk to any coach today, ask them the question as along the way, because we all have experiences of lots of different levels. Some of the best coaches in the country are not in, in Division I. That's not a knock on any of the Division I coaches, okay? It's just that we all have respect for junior college coaches or Division III or Division II. I cut my teeth there. I was challenged there and, 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 and had an opportunity to, to survive and to win enough and to be successful enough to be able to main, keep a job and grow in the profession. So it, was, it got me ready. Come up, guys. We're going to move to the right of the aisle. Sam Blum with AL.com. Uh, Jared was talking in the Prague room, and I guess he's up there, that he was a little sick. Is that something that's going to be a concern for you or, or for Jared? You can answer the question. Yeah, Jared is, he is under the weather. Um, Bryce, is, Bryce is also. We've got a bunch of guys that are sniffling and hacking and, and coughing, but uh, we, don't, we don't play today. And uh, Jared would be, uh, he would be less than 100% if we had to play today. If we played yesterday, Bryce would have been less than 100%. Um, he'll be fine tomorrow. And with that, we're joined by student athletes from Auburn, Bryce Brown and Jared Harper. Jared, do you want to tell us how you're feeling? Um, just a little bit under the weather. I'm a little sick, but um, that's, that's not going to um, stop me from, from con continuing to prepare for, for this game. And um, This is a, a big moment for uh, us as a team and uh, us as a program, so I know I'm going to be ready. Let's go to the back of the room, just to the left of the aisle. Questions for Coach Pearl or for our two student athletes? Hi, Coach Pearl. Sean Brown, Christian Broadcasting Network. How are you? I'm Congratulations. Sure. Um, I've spoken to a lot of the players in the locker room, and they have said that faith has been interwoven into the fabric of your coaching style. I'd like to ask you, how significant has that been? Um, just battling through injuries, everything that you've had to deal with um, this season and last season, how has faith been pronounced uh, in the coaching program? Could you ask that one more time? I heard a lot of it, but I didn't Sorry. hear anything. Uh, a lot of the players in the locker room have said that faith has been interwoven into your coaching style. How significant has that been, um, getting you b back here making history for your school? Well, I, I think what faith and style, um, we want, these guys want to make history. They came to Auburn at a time when the program was not competitive and relevant. Um, and we said, listen, if we do this together and we all push each other, trust each other, uh, bring the best out of each other, we have a chance to make history. And so when we looked at the road to the Final Four and we saw, with the exception of maybe Oregon, there wasn't a stronger 12 than, many, than New Mexico State, I told the guys, I promise you, this first one's going to be as tough as any one that we go through. And it was. And, but to have a chance to then have to go through Kansas and North Carolina and Kentucky and now Virginia, the only one seed left, if we're truly trying to make history, as part of our fate, you know, sometimes there's fate, you know, and, and, and other times there's opportunity. And God's put this opportunity before us. And we're going to do the best we possibly can to take advantage of this opportunity. That may mean winning. It may mean losing. But we're going to take advantage of this opportunity. Continuing with questions for Coach Pearl or Bryce or Jared, all the way up front to the right. Uh, Nathan King, the Auburn Plainsman. This is for Bryce. Um, I was talking to Steven Pearl in the locker room about, you know, your maturation and how much you've grown as a leader during your time at Auburn. He said the, the Division II loss to Barry last year was really where it kind of snapped in the right way for you. Is there anything you can recount from that, and how have you grown since then, do you think? Um, really, um, I just felt like, you know, I just wasn't heading down the right path to be able to change the program, and that's part of what I wanted to do when I got here, help change the program, and... Um, um, I just wanted to, 
it was starting to be my time to be a leader on the team. And it was just time for me to start growing up. And, um, you know, something about that just, you know, made it, made it hit the light for me and, uh, you know, kind of did turn on the switch just because I had to start growing up. And um, things had to change if I wanted to get to where I wanted to get to as an individual or if I wanted to get to where I wanted to get to as a team. And um, I knew I had to, had to change for the good. <clears throat> On the right side of the room, all the way in the back, please raise your hand and state your name in media outlet. Anthony Romano, WDBJ in Roanoke, Virginia. This is for Coach. Um, it seems like the SEC has come a long way over the last few years. Now they've just added another successful coach in Buzz Williams. What can you say about the state of your league and, and how it helped you get to this point? Well, I just hope our league doesn't go to 20 league games. That's all I can tell you. Uh, we're at 18 right now, and that's plenty. Um, Mike Slive, uh, years ago, um, was frustrated, I think, that the SEC was dominating in every sport, men and women. And uh, men's basketball was behind. And I think he really challenged his, uh, um, his athletic directors and said, why? I mean, you look across the board, I don't mind saying this, the SEC is the best conference in the country, and it's not even close in all sports. That's a big statement. But not in men's basketball. The ACC has been really, really strong. You know, you can make an argument for the Big, Tw big Ten or the Big 12, but we've really closed the gap because of the depth and the breadth of our program, the quality of the coaching, the commitment of facilities. You know, you used to, used to go to a December game in the SEC, and there'd be nobody there. That's not the case anymore. Our fan base is traveling, they're following us, and, and it's because that we, we have better players, better coaches, and, and a greater commitment. And uh, our league now is, is able to compete with, with any other conference in the country. Left side of the room toward the back, Mike. Bruce, uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. We talked about the three-point shooting a little yesterday. When you face Virginia, do you have to give the guys even more of a green light to shoot contested threes because of the nature of their defense? And how confident are you in these guys knocking it down with a hand in their face? Well, one of the, one of the fortunate things uh, is these guys have never heard, like, we got to get it on the second side and the third side. You know, which a lot of coaches and commentators talk. I have no idea what side they're talking about. If, if he has the ball on the first side and he's open, he better shoot it. And so better he and a couple of the other guys in that locker room. Because you might not get another open shot. And so if you're going to take a contested shot, it's probably going to be later in the clock. And, and if it's later in the clock, we better make that one. Or if we don't make it, we better get somebody on the team to rebound it and get us another possession. So our guys understand Virginia's length. I think they understand the... That, 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 that Virginia is probably the most efficient team in college basketball because they're like in the top five in both offensive and defensive efficiency. But they also have confidence in each other and they also have confidence in what we do. We're going to get some open looks. We're going to get some open looks. And we better knock them down. We have time for one or two more. Let's go to the right side, <laughs> left of the aisle. Uh, Josh Vitale, Montgomery Advertiser. This is for both Jared and Bryce. Um, I know your fathers are always around the team, around the program with you guys shooting in the gym or in the locker room. Uh, what does it mean that Bruce has kind of fostered that environment where your dads can still be a part of your career even though you're in college now? We're going to ask Jared to take that first, please, then Bryce. Um, I would just say that my, my dad has been a part of my life, my, my entire life. Um, he's always just helped me and, and strived me uh, to be, be a good player and just um, to have B BP has um, his son, Coach, Coach Steve, um, a, a part of the program. I feel like this, uh, uh, like uh, I've seen before, a father-son program. Um, Coach Flan's son is going to be, be at the school next year. So it's just, just a, a great environment to be around. And Bryce. Oh, yeah, same. Um, you know, I, I, really, when I really appreciate Coach Pereira for allowing my dad to be so um, interactive with the program and um, be able to come down here and um, um, help, help not only – prepare me for this, but help coach me as well. And he allows my dad to have a little input on how I play and um, the things I do, um, um, you know, and that's, that just goes with um, having a, a good coach that, you know, trusts me, trusts my father, and um, know that he's going to put me in the um, right situation to um, succeed. And um, so, yeah, that's how I feel about that. We do have time for one final question, if there is one, for Bryce or Jared or Coach Pearl. Looks like there's one in the third row toward the center. Uh, yeah, Doug Dowdy from the run of times in Virginia. When you have to win two games to win it all, is it any challenge not to think ahead? Um, 
It, I can say it, it is pretty tough. Um, you know, we, we all want to win a national championship. That is the goal. But um, I feel like you definitely have to take it one game at a time because, you know, um, Virginia is favored in, in, a, in a lot of their games. And, um, you know, we want to be a part of making history. And um, so taking it one game at a time is definitely key. But um, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, we are starting to see. And, um, you know, if, if we able to get over this game, um, it will definitely help things. Um, and, um, you know, it's just, it's just giving us confidence. The, the more and more we win, the more and more we win together, and, um, and the more we succeed. So, We want to thank Bryce and Jared and Coach Pearl for joining us here in the main interview room. The Auburn locker room is now closed as well. Thank you, guys. Great. Want to wish these guys luck tomorrow night. Thanks. I've never heard applause at the end of a press conference, but great job. Hope you guys feel better. Virginia availability begins at 11.15 with the open locker room and the starter, start Virginia starters in the breakout areas as well. That's down the hall to the left as you leave the main interview room. We'll be joined by head coach Tony Bennett here in the main interview room at 11.30. And Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome will come here and spend some time with us at about 11.40. 11.15, open locker room for Virginia as well as the starters in the breakout.